Hi, I'm Ima. Welcome back to my auto repair videos. In this video, we're going to talk about my brother's Honda. So right now, he's telling me that he has some acceleration problems. So obviously, the check engine light was on, so we decided to check it with the OBD2. And we saw that we got an error code, which is P2646. Now doing some research online, we found out, or just reading from the OBD2, it says that it's an A rocker actuator control system performance slash uh, stuck off. Bank one. So we decided to do some research on what this code meant and what the issues it caused. So this video is not going to be a how-to video, it's rather going to be a diagnostic video on uh, the symptoms of this problem, uh, the effects of it, and how people have solved it. Alright, so just a disclaimer, we're not professional mechanics or anything, and if you're watching this video, uh, you're probably trying to do research like we are. So you and me, we're probably in the same boat. Now talking about the actual research that we did on this uh, P2646 code, there's a few things that can cause the uh, code. Now this code deals with uh, basically the rocker arm actuator, which deals with the uh, engine oil, which is used for lubricating your engine. So the things that can go wrong is, first off, your oil can be bad. And that means that it can, be, it can clog up the uh, passages, or that it can be too thick, or that it can cause the uh, rocker arm actuators to not work, which we'll get to later. Another reason that this code could happen, or this problem could happen, is if you, haven't, if you have low oil, which means that you haven't uh, topped off your oil. Now, mentioning that, my brother, usually, my brother Amiral, usually comes home every so often, and when he comes, off, when he comes home, my dad often checks the oil, you know, does a few maintenance things for his car. And a few weeks ago, he topped off the oil. And now we're having this problem with the engine. So it's consistent with what we've read online. The same problem has happened to other people. And it seems that, like I said before, low, low oil can be a problem for this uh, code. What I failed to mention was, it, you, you might have uh, caught it, but my brother's uh, oil was low. We actually had to add two quarts, which is a lot because this system can only hold, uh, hold four quarts. So because there was little a low amount of oil in his system, there is a problem because oil shouldn't be that low because oil should recirculate through the system, which means that that's a symptom of leaks. Low oil can also be a problem because as oil circulates through the system, it can get mixed up with some, um, some other contaminants and form a sort of sludge that clogs the whole system. Now, because of this, we want to, the, the solution to this is to change the oil, but before that, we want to sort of flush the engine. Now, to flush your engine at a garage costs around $60, and we don't want to pay that much. So we instead decide to use seafoam, which is basically an engine cleaner. It sort of uh, gets rid of varnishes, tarnishes, uh, uh, tar, you name it. But essentially, you mix it with your motor oil, you put it through your system, and it should get rid of sludges and contaminants. It sort of flushes your engine. You can research more about seafoam if you want to, but for now, some people on the internet have said that just cleaning the, uh, flushing the engine and changing the oil can actually get, and resetting the code, can actually get rid of the code chewing up. So that's for some people on the internet, but we discovered that there might be something even deeper involved uh, in terms of our car. Another thing I failed to mention is that this code could also have a different, a few different other causes. So if you take a look behind the engine here, there could be problems with the the, the spool assembly, which, you know, is a solenoid. Or it could be the oil pressure switch. Actually, let me uh, shine a light on it. You guys did not hear me bump my head on the hood. <laughs> so, there could be a problem with the solenoid, which is this circular thing right here. There could be a problem with the oil pressure switch, which is this circular thing, this black thing right here. Or there could be a problem with your oil pressure pump. So. Those are a few other things that could be the cause of the P2646 code. I should also mention that these codes show up on pretty much any Honda. You know, Accord, Civic, CRV, you know, Element, you name it. So earlier, I mentioned that we thought there might be something deeper involved here. Let me just get over here. And if I put my glove under this assembly here and sort of feel around, you can actually see that. That there's oil showing up on my glove. Now, 
what does that indicate to you? To me, it indicates that there's a leak. Now, that's a problem, and it, it sort of makes sense because, like I said before, my brother lost two quarts of oil. But it's only been two months since we last changed, uh, last uh, topped off the oil. So I mean, how could we have lost that much? So that 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 means there must be a leak. And if there's a leak, that means there must be something wrong with the gasket. Most people at this point will say that the most convenient solution would be to replace the entire assembly, which includes the uh, the oil pressure switch, the gasket and its sh uh, screen, and the heat shield. Uh, that costs around $40 aftermarket on Amazon, and to get it genuine is probably $140. However, looking on Amazon, apparently there are bad reviews for the assembly because it's around... Because apparently the solenoid wears out fairly quickly. So instead of trying to replace the whole unit, what we're going to do instead is we're going to replace the gasket. The reason that we're replacing the gasket is because if you see on the gasket, which I hope we're going to be overlaying on the video right now, is it has a screen on it. This screen, basically, the, the oil goes through it and it filters, it filters contaminants out. So we're thinking that, especially because we haven't changed the oil in a while, that contaminants have built up on this filter and the filter is not working as well, starting, starting to clog it. So that means because of the clog, it's starting to wear down the gasket and that's why it's causing the leak. Also keep in mind that there isn't just a uh, assembly on this side of the engine, there's also one down here. Now I can't point it out because it's, it's really dark right now. It's sort of down there. So for these gaskets, we're actually going to replace them with genuine ones. Uh, I think we're getting them for $10 off of eBay, both the front one and the back one. You can also get them from the dealer, uh, but my dad doesn't want to do that because, you know, why would you go to the dealer and hang around for like a few hours just to get like a tiny $10 part? Or you can also get it aftermarket from AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts. But why would we want to do that for such a cheap part, you know, like $10? Uh, but anyway, I think that's over with. So just to recap, what we're going to do first is we're going to flush the engine, then we're going to change the oil, and then worst comes to worst, we're going to replace the gasket after that. No, this is the worst comes to worst after the gasket and the, the screen. Then we're going to replace this assembly. But hopefully the gasket should be the problem because, you know, $40, $40 on an assembly is uh, a bit a lot, but as long as we replace it, it should be safe for my brother. And that's why it really matters, you know, safety. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, I think we're just going to talk about why I did this video. Now, while researching this video, uh, while researching this problem, we found a lot of resources that helped us uh, on the internet. But this video, I, I did it as sort of a way to help people who are also, just like me, trying to figure out how to solve this problem in a cheap or easy way. Uh, I mean, at least a cheap, easy, and safe way. But I want to have this be a sort of a point, uh, a forum of discussion for people who want to help others, just like me and you, to solve this problem. And I can tell you, the most annoying thing when you're trying to diagnose a car problem is when you're trying, when you search up the problem, you get no results that are relevant to it. So doing a video like this helps to bring attention to it and also help people who are trying to solve the problem uh, at least get a start. So with that out of the way, I'm Ayman, and today I showed you, or rather, I talked with you about diagnosing the P2646 code on pretty much any Honda, and this one right here is in the court. So if you want to check out the video of me replacing the gasket, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that when we actually get the part. But for now, I'll see you. So I'm Ayman. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. We've got videos on I and Ayman. Uh, I apologize for the sound quality; it is very windy right now. But for now, I'm Ayman. I'm mechanic Ayman signing out. Peace. Not a professional mechanic though. <laughs>